Well, what a treat today. These are some LTO batteries, which stands for lithium titanate, which is a really interesting uh, chemistry. So let's open them up, take a look, and make some stuff with them. Here we go. Well, battery Hookup out of Pennsylvania sent me a few of these batteries, uh, LTO or lithium titanate. And you know, before they asked me to do a review on these, I hadn't even heard of this chemistry. It has really fantastic cold weather performance and it packs a serious punch from an amp perspective. Uh, but it's a little bit less energy dense. And anyways, but hey, we're going to we're going to test it. We're going to do some capacity testing and and find out. Now these are used batteries. Uh, they were used for about 2 years to start diesel generators and really big diesel generators. The two of them were put together as a pair to start the diesel generators. Uh, so uh, they're slightly different between them. Uh, when you read the sticker on here, the sticker actually uh, says the information for the pair. So it's not one module. Now the sticker says 36.8 volts for the pair. So we have 18.4 volts for just one module. And I weighed one module, and one module is 11.1 .1 pounds, uh, or that is roughly five kilograms for you guys overseas. So each one is going to be about 350 watt hours, but we'll test that. Now these particular ones are 8S each, so we have 16 cells total. Battery Hookup has these two listed separately on their website. Uh, one has a circuit board in it and one does not. These are, these are just standard Phillips screws. All right, starting with this one. All right, so here's the pair of them. As you can see, one has a circuit board in it and one doesn't. Here's the two modules. We can see this side has a PCB and I've begun removing some of these screws from here and some of the screws are still in place. Now it looks like we do have some kind of computer there and some resistors, so I'm guessing uh, this probably had some balance function for this half, you know, for this module. And then we have this really nice fuse right here. 175 amp, 150 volts, and that voltage is both AC and DC. Now if you want to use this, uh, one side of these, one side of this is going to be your main positive, and one side is going to be your main negative. Uh, I don't actually know which side is which right now, but when we take this off we can get a better look. And here's the other side. That's so neat, isn't it? So up here we have our, one of these is going to be the main positive and main negative. And then the smaller screws are all for the voltage sense, the BMS. I asked Battery Hookup why one of them uh, doesn't have a circuit board and one does. The answer is that this side of the pair had a proprietary BMS that had to be removed before these cells could be sold on the secondary market. Now this side is not a BMS. I count some resistors in here, so it might have some kind of balance function, I'm not sure, uh, but it's not a BMS. There's no protection involved with this, but there's no ability to kind of shut, shut off or on the current going out if one cell goes too high or too low in voltage. Uh, so this stuff does not have a BMS. Yes, we have a fuse, but not a BMS. So we have 17.65 volts across these two main terminals. So if you want to use the fuse, you can, and you can leave the circuit board in place uh, and just pull your main positive and negative from these two posts. So that's pretty cool. This, yes, and we can take this off. Very cool. Well, we just got this off. There's the back side. Very cool. Look at those big thick bars there sitting on here. It looks like our main positive and negative were over in the corner. 
and you can see down here would be the cell tab and then it has a nice thick um, I don't know if it's nickel plate or whatever it comes up here and that's where it would have screwed to and there's a voltage sense so it's thinner so can you guys see the difference there this is also a larger diameter screw so here are the screws that I just took out and I moved two of them off to the side so we can see the difference the one on the right is the voltage sense screw and the one on the left bigger those are for the main positive and negative so the main positive and negative would be here and these smaller ones are all the voltage sense so very cool and this one which came without the BMS attached without any PCB looks like the main positive and negative are in the middle and then it comes around so slightly different cell configuration bet between the two so the total pack is at 17.68 and then we have 2.2 2.2 so really great news every cell was within a couple of millivolts of each other I mean I'm serious they were like 2.205 to 2.207 those were kind of the two extremes that I saw so just a couple of millivolts spread just fantastic and I don't know how long these were sitting in storage uh, but man cells are just at a perfect voltage the nominal voltage for this chemistry is 2.3 volts so to have them at 2.2 I mean that's really close to the nominal voltage now I looked up a couple of things on Toshiba's website about these cells and this is what I could find the nominal voltage is 2.3 volts per cell the voltage range from 0% state of charge to 100% is going to be 1.5 volts to 2.7 volts per cell which means that each module has a nominal voltage of 18.4 volts and has a range of 12 volts to 21.6 volts as they sit right now they're not going to be a drop in replacement for uh, 12 24 or 48 volt equipment so we'll address that uh, might be in a future video I might split this up depending on how long this takes now some people do run systems at higher voltages I have a friend Ben up in Vermont I made a video about his system He's running a MPP Solar PIP GK. I think it's the GK model. Now that goes up to 64 volts. So he is uh, running up there in the uh, low 60s for his voltage of his battery pack on a regular basis. So if he was to take, say, three of these modules together, that would actually be a really nice system for his higher voltage setup. Now most of us, when we're running a nominal 48 volt system, we're typically going to be running the low 50s. Uh, so between 48 volts, 56 volts is about the range that I'll be running in. But right now I am really pleasantly surprised with how perfect these cell voltages are. So what I'd like to do uh, now uh, for this video, uh, I'm going to uh, start doing some capacity testing on these. So I'm going to start by discharging it. Uh, so I'm going to put some of this electricity into this uh, server battery uh, that I've used before. I don't have an inverter that can handle 17 volts, so I can't plug this into an inverter and then, say, a space heater. So I'm going to use this boost converter to take the lower voltage, boost it up to the higher voltage to help charge the server battery. I think the server battery is at like 55 volts right now. Uh, but they're actually similar in total capacity, uh, 350 watt hours uh, about each. So we're pretty close in capacity, just different formats, different layouts. Now when you go to hook up something like this, there are capacitors built into this uh, boost converter. And the initial inrush of current from the battery to the board could cause a uh, capacitor to blow off. I've actually done this before. Uh, this green one right here on an older board blew off. So that's what I learned about using uh, a resistor. Now this is a 100 watt uh, 1 ohm resistor. So what I'm going to do is actually touch the negative 
post here. And then I'll touch uh, to the tip. And it just turned on the boost converter. So it charged the capacitors to do that uh, without having a bad spark. So now I can switch down here. And I did that very quickly on purpose because I didn't want to lose the charge in the capacitors because it'll self drain. I'm discharging these LTO cells by going to this boost converter and charging this server battery that I built in a previous video. Or I, I just rebuilt the inside. I didn't actually build the cells in it. We're currently at 7.69 amps on this battery. Perfectly fine. And we're charging up. We're currently at 55.83 volts charging this. Okay, we are done with this test. Now what's really interesting is I checked the voltage on the pack just about five minutes ago and we were at like 16 and a half and we just fell off the curve, the, the knee, because now we hit 13. <laughs> so it is dropping super fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. And that is it. So let's see, uh, like for example, what one of the cells are at. There we go. So 1.7, it's climbing a little bit, 1.8. We'll see what it settles out at, but that dropped super fast right at the knee. So we know that we just finished discharging this. And at this point I was adding some to this uh, Chevy Volt battery uh, because I filled up the other one. All right, well I'll disconnect this and we'll get ready to charge it. So I have the shunt and the meter hooked up. So this is gonna measure uh, both watts and watt hours uh, that we put into the battery. Now I don't typically measure the electricity going into the battery. I typically just measure uh, what we pull out from it. But when I got these LTO cells, I was chatting with a buddy of mine about them because I was very excited about setting up the test. And he asked me if I could do the round trip efficiency test. Uh, so that's why I'm gonna try it. Uh, so, hey, thanks, Ben. <laughs> when I was reading Toshiba's website about these cells, it said the charging voltage would be 2.7 volts per cell. Uh, so that's gonna be a total of 21.6 volts. So that's what I'll program into this ISDT Q8 charger. So the same voltage works out if I program that it is lithium iron phosphate and 3.6 per cell and I do a 6S program. And we should be able to put about 350 watt hours in. Uh, it might take more than that to actually get us up to full charge. Uh, that's what we're gonna find out. But we're charging it through the shunt using this ISDT Q8 charger, and that is being powered by this three hundred and sixty nine in before this automatically shut off. See it it changes color there and it says that it's shut off. And oh, that's why it's beeping at us. So we'll go ahead and disconnect this stuff and put a load on this. Discharge. I had to swap these two wires around so they face the other direction on the shunt. And we're now going ahead and pulling. I upped this a little bit so that we can pull this faster because I don't have five hours before I go to sleep. <laughs> uh, and we're just charging into this server battery again using the boost converter. And I like to turn on an, an additional fan. Well, the battery is now below 16 volts, so we're going to start to see this drop very quickly. That's the knee of these batteries. So if you do get these, don't run them below 2 volts per cell. They really start to drop off very fast. The neat thing about this chemistry, though, is that it doesn't damage it the way it will on other uh, batteries. During the majority of this discharge, I was running it at 9 amps. And just when we were at 16.5 volts... I dropped this boost converter down so that we'd have this guy more at 4 amps. And I did that on purpose just so that we slow down at this knee because this knee comes up on you so fast. <laughs> so that's it. That's as good as we're going to get. 365 
go ahead and shut this off. We're dropping so fast at this point, so go ahead and stop that right there. There we go. Three hundred and sixty five and we put three hundred and sixty nine watts into it. Uh, so let's do that math out right here. So three hundred and sixty five divided by three hundred and sixty nine. We have ninety eight point nine percent. So about ninety nine percent. So it's just really exciting. I mean, I'm not seeing a downside to these cells uh, besides the cost. <laughs> I guess that's the one downside to them. They are an expensive cell. But 20,000 cycles, not cold weather dependent, super safe technology, and really high round trip efficiency. Uh, thank you to Battery Hookup for sending me some. I'm going to be making some cool projects out of these in some upcoming videos. If you'd like to buy some of your own, they don't have very many. Uh, they hopefully they get some more in because I might even want to grab some more for myself uh, because I'm just really excited about what I can do with these not being cold weather dependent means that I can use these on projects that are outside and not heated uh, so I really kind of want to pick up more just for that uh, so if you'd like to get some from battery hookup uh, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below you can use my coupon code, which is David Paws. That gets you 10% off. So thank you, everybody, very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. All right.